You're, you're listening to the Albert Times, and I'm who? And I'm William Cooper. Um, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You're welcome. See you later. Okay. Well, folks, let's go right straight to Phoenix for the metal report with uh, Frank. Hi, Bill. Welcome back. We missed you. Well, thank you. It was, uh, we had some very exciting times while you were away, in case you were, I'm sure you were catching on the news. We saw some pretty wild swings happening in the, in the Dow. Uh, one point in time, that 171 point drop uh, came back on the following Monday, only to, to see some very heavy trading the following day, plunge dramatically and rise back. What we've been able to determine is that's primarily been sell-offs by Great Britain. Most of those assets were sold by, you know, the sales were out of the British Isles, and most of the people that bought up were the amateur mutual funds. We talked about it in the past. Uh, there's over 7,000 mutual funds. Primarily, these have uh, been generated in the last five years. Most of these have come online. It's been with the reductions in workforce of all these brokerage houses on Wall Street. They've been laying off people on the dro by the droves by the thousands. So what do these guys do? They start their own mutual fund. It's, it's actually a very simple process to do. So that's what we saw them doing. They thought they were getting these bargains and bottom fishing. And in the meantime, the big boys are getting out of the U.S. market and the small fry are buying it up thinking it's a great value. Today we saw some fairly heavy trading on the Dow. 529 million, uh, which is a, a lot of trading. That's you know what, uh, Frank? Somebody wrote me a letter and said, uh, what's the Dow? <laughs> okay, what's the Dow? Uh, Why don't you explain that right quick for those who don't know? One more time. The Dow is the 30 blue chip stocks that are supposed to be representative of the New York Stock Exchange. What it is is one share each, one stock share of each of these companies added together is 5,584, which it was today. So it's just basically a compilation, it's an accumulation of the value of one share of each of these 30 stocks. So if you had one share of each of these 30 stocks, you would have made, uh, uh, what, $1,500 over the last year? Uh, something along those lines. Okay, yes. I just want to. If we look at dividend yields, though, if we look at dividends paid, if you held one share of each of the Dow stocks, the Dow Industrials, and you went with dividends paid, not with the rises in value, because that's not really applicable, because you got capital gains and inflation, a lot of other things. But just on dividends paid, it takes you 47 years to get your principal investment back. Just like that. <laughs> that's how poor a value the stock market is. But this has been a classic. These last couple of weeks while you've been away has been a classic indicator of a market top. A lot of volume and ultimately going nowhere. Gold's been uh, holding very steady. It's been a narrow trading range between 383 and 3. I'm sorry, 393 and 396, and it's holding right in there at the, right around 396 today. Some interesting articles, uh, Bureau of Engraving and Printing, was making some comments about the Treasury. It's like, well, why the Secret Service is understating? the seriousness of the counterfeiting problem overseas. Understating it. <laughs> Understating. That's what Bureau of Engraving and Printing is saying, that the, so the Secret Service is trying to downplay this. And yet, if you look at the $100 Federal Reserve notes, you will find a lot of them will have a variety of silly stamps on them, or you know, stamps from foreign countries or Chinese stamps. It is just about a requirement any longer overseas if you are making a deposit at a bank that you stamp your company ID on there in some fashion, so if it turns up counterfeit, they can come back to you for restitution. Well, we did some research on this, mm -hmm. and we actually uh, called the different banks, and we visited some, and uh, we called the uh, the Federal Reserve and the uh, uh, United States Treasury Department, and what we we asked for specific statistics that we could check 
and we ask for you know how many bills are come back in, how many bills are destroyed, uh, how many bills are are put into circulation, and all this kind of thing. And uh, what we came up with is this whole counterfeit thing is a, is a lie, it's a scam. Sure. It, it, it's it's not true at all. Exactly, Ian has been pointing out. You just have to figure out where and who is. What are they coming? What's their game? You know, they come up with this lie, this fabrication that counterfeiting is a problem. And then uh, what we start seeing is these other nations start doing this. Because I mostly keep things, uh, you know, the things that I do keep, I keep in the $100 notes. Uh, what I don't keep in gold, that way I'm able to turn it quickly if I need to. Uh, but I see these stamps a lot. Okay, from you know, from Nigeria fishing uh, and some various uh, Japanese and and Chinese and, and just many other nations will all have these stamps on it. These are just some very interesting articles as to why that is. So you know, they're setting a fear factor out out in the globe uh, that I find very interesting. And uh, I don't care who or what Secret Service the Treasury says to me. There's got to be a devaluation if they don't do it international countries will uh, just by their lack of trust and they start discounting the sale of these things it's going to be an automatic you know just the law of supply and demand will take over so we're in for an interesting ride the, the new notes are supposed to be issued on the 25th of this month so it's going to be very intriguing to see what occurs well, I think all this counterfeit scam scare is, uh, is to uh, drum up acceptance of the new money. And number two, to encourage uh, businesses to stop accepting the old money mm -hmm. uh, so that people will be forced uh, to exchange their money in immediately because it, 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 it's worthless if nobody will accept it. Exactly. And uh, so the government can, can legitimately say to the American people, well, you know, there's no, not going to be any currency exchange. And then they're going to force you to exchange your currency, exactly. like like immediately. We have already seen the uh, communications that they're sending to uh, corporations and chain stores and businesses, uh, which uh, clearly says um, that for your own good, uh, as soon as the new money is issued, stop accepting the old money uh, because uh, we've been flooded with counterfeit. And uh, if you bring counterfeit to the bank, we will not uh, uh, accept it. As all part of a lie. So when you add it all up, the only <laughs> thing that really makes sense out of it all is devaluation. Yeah, and yeah. just for all those people that have Federal Reserve notes, and I've talked to a few of them, they got these things buried in ammo cans, they got them in their safe deposit box. Like we pointed out, it's not money. It is nothing. It's a worthless security by legal definition. And what will happen is these people won't turn them in. They're too stubborn to get it in the gold, and ultimately they will have absolutely nothing for their efforts. I can't understand why somebody would rather have a piece of paper than an ounce of gold. I, I mean, it, it, I think it's true. I, I mean, you can take a Federal Reserve note to the deepest jungles of South or Central America. You can take a piece of gold. Even a tribal person down there knows that gold has value and yeah. doesn't. What's the, the deal with some of these allegedly educated people here in this country that they can't recognize the same thing? I don't know. Quite frankly, I'd rather have a roll of toilet paper than... Uh... Well, I'd have to <laughs> you know, Federal Reserve notes make poor uh, toilet paper. That they tend to leave a stain and they, uh, on a rash at times. But, uh, no, if you've got it... You're nasty, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a reality. <laughs> we won't say how I one time. But anyway, uh, the truth of the matter is, I mean, people have saved, uh, some people have saved for uh, a rainy day, and they've accumulated quite a, an amount. And they can't get over the fact that, you know, they think it has value. They just can't change that line of thought. And it's sad for all the effort that they put forward to accumulate this, that's just going to be wiped out. It's just going to be wiped away. And uh, But I guess they're going to get exactly what they deserve for their lack of knowledge and their lack of foresight. Yes. So we're, we're in for some interesting time this month. Hey, and like we talked about, what, two months ago, I asked you when is this going to happen? Uh -huh. March. It makes sense. Yeah. It fits into their pagan philosophy. That's right. It all fits. It all dovetails. Uh, uh, Clinton recently, I was watching television and just uh, like he was reading it out of a of, out of an esoteric uh, 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 manual on uh, on uh, oh gosh my brain has just gone dead <laughs> uh, on uh, what do you call it when they uh, when they have their 
whatever. Their ritual. Ritual, that's the word I'm looking for. Just as if he was reading it out of an esoteric ritual manual. Mm -hmm. He said, the spring oh, is coming. <laughs> spring is coming. Yeah, he, he said. probably was. And Let this be a new rebirth, he said. <laughs> oh, yeah, when you understand Mystery Babylon, <laughs> when you go through and, and, and re-listen, or, or for those that haven't, when you understand the philosophy and how these people operate, it all makes sense. And they're pretty easy to figure out. Yeah. It's real basic. And the thing is, they think themselves to be so intelligent and not making any mistakes, and yet they make plenty of mistakes. Yeah, well, I found myself yelling at the, at the television. That, Are you talking to me? Mm -hmm. Are you talking to me? I can't. <laughs> I, I hate to watch C-SPAN. I need to watch it to see what's going on, and I'll watch it for brief periods of time, but then you just get so incensed that you just have to turn it off. It's, it's disgusting to watch, uh, but they are at least they are admitting to doing certain things out there that are going to that they are going to do to us, and that's why it is prudent to watch it. But it is tedious at times to get through that program. Uh, very tedious to watch all these lies and fabrications, and knowing that they get away with it. Yeah, Schumer threatened the whole nation on the on the floor of the house. No, it doesn't surprise me. He said, uh, threat to the entire nation. Yeah, he said, uh, if you don't pass this uh, terror anti-terrorist bill, uh, if you knew what I knew, you'd pass it. You're going to be sorry. That's what he said. Well, I guess they're going to blow up another federal building or maybe, uh, a, Bill, I've maybe got... a school this time or something. No, no. <laughs> uh, don't go to the Olympics, okay? Oh, I wouldn't. Uh, you couldn't catch me dead at the Olympics. If okay. I did go, you probably would find me dead. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So take it and take it for what it's worth. Um, yeah. You know, I, you hit it right on the head. There is, and there more than likely will be another incident. Yeah, in fact, I told you that when you were here, that, yeah. uh, that, that they're going to hit the Olympics. And that's yeah. exactly what our intelligence tells us. They're going to hit the Olympics. So if you were planning on going, I would change my mind if I were you. No way. No way. Not this way. Well. I wouldn't give them the satisfaction of spending any of my hard-earned resources at that, uh, you know, pomposity <coughs> anyway. I mean, because all it is is glorifying the, the rebirth of Atlantis. Yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to support that in any fashion yeah. whatsoever. And the disaster that they promulgate will, uh, will hasten the rebirth, <laughs> well, they hope. Yeah, uh, remember that, uh, that little chart and graph that I showed you when I was up? Yeah. For how to work that? Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop you a note as to what I've got, reference some information on that. I think you'll find it, and I'm sure it'll dovetail in with yours. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you got any questions on how to work that, just give me a ring. Okay. Any specials or parting? Uh... No, not right now. No specials right now. We do have a very uh, a very excellent newsletter. Uh, not a newsletter. This is a, uh, a flyer. It's called uh, The Money Changer. It's uh, one of uh, Franklin Sanders' uh, issues that he's given us permission to reprint. The technical analysis of the stock market is excellent. For those of you that haven't received it, give your broker a call and uh, request a copy of The Money Changer. Um, we'd really like to see people get this in their hands. It's a, it explains price to book. It explains a lot of things about the stock market with charts and graphs. And it's a, an easy to understand technical analysis and shows why it's the last place on earth you want to be with your investment. Mm -hmm. The Money Changer by Franklin Sanders. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you. You have a good evening. We'll talk to you later. Okay, Frank. Good night. Bye-bye. Call 1-800-289-2646, folks. Talk to Frank. Talk to anybody there, but talk to Frank. Frank spends time with us, so we should spend time with him. Uh, get the uh, money changer. And I think also that uh, that's a source for Stephen Jacobson's tapes on mind control and money. Uh, and his tape on money is the best that's ever been made. The best primer, the best education on, on the economic and money system that anyone has ever done in the history of the world, bar none. Whether you're a beginner or you're uh, uh, an economist that uh, graduated from college and has a doctorate degree. You're going to learn something from that tape. I don't care who you are. Okay, folks, we have a special guest tonight, and uh, I was uh, sort of bumping around up on the Mesa uh, earlier this evening, and lo and behold, there was this little red car sitting there, and uh, I snuck around and peeked inside, and... <laughs>
before me was Michael LaFonte and his wife, Sharon. And uh, I scared the devil out of them. They were locked in a passionate embrace overlooking the little town of St. John's. And so I grabbed Mike and brought him to be our guest tonight. Mike is the uh, editor-in-chief of our newspaper, Veritas. He's responsible for all the layout and the work. And, uh, well, he's the editor-in-chief. He's the big boss man. He's uh, what makes it work. He, he's, uh, he does it all. Welcome to the Hour of the Time, Mike. Thank you, Bill, and uh, thank you for the introduction. Well, you're welcome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and how you got here and and uh, what this paper is. I mean, they've heard it from me for a long time. They needed to hear it from the man that makes it. Okay, well, um, my name is Michael Aponte. I studied at Cal Poly Pomona in um, electrical engineering for five years. I worked as an electrical engineer for three years. And, um, well, it wasn't something that I thought it was. Um, I started hearing the same old thing, and this is probably you'll hear in different companies, different fields where they talk about we're competing with a global economy and we have to downsize. And at the same time, with the fewer employees, those fewer employees have to work even harder. So I was just sick of hearing that, and um, I got to know Bill, and then Bill made this offer of starting a newspaper, and I was really interested, and here I am. And uh, I, I'll tell you what, folks, if, if Michael wasn't here, there wouldn't be any newspaper. Uh, and I'm not saying that flippantly or lightly or anything. It's the truth. There just wouldn't be a newspaper. Uh, Mike can tell you that, uh, and I can tell you that I don't have time. I just don't have time. I am busy from the time I get up, uh, which is usually around uh, 9 or 10 in the morning until 3 o'clock in the morning. And uh, uh, it, I just don't have time. I've got, I'm, I'm doing so many things. And uh, so Mike is... is uh, has taken over and is really doing the paper. I do some of the editing. I write a lot of the uh, stories that are in there, uh, whether they're under my name or under Kaji News Service. Uh, they're either written by me or rewritten by me that were submitted by uh, legitimate members of the Kaji News Service. Um, and, but Mike does all the rest. And Mike uh, finds the photographs and, and uh, finds other stories and handles the letters to the editor and and uh, if, if you don't think it's a hard job, sit down and try to do a newspaper in your home, the quality of the one that we have, Veritas. And uh, most of you I know have seen it. Some of you haven't. And just uh, you see how far you get um, and, and how long it takes you to get that far. And then you'll understand uh, what a tremendous job Mike does. Why don't you tell us about the paper, Mike? Well, Veritas is a 14-page uh, full-size newspaper. We print articles that you won't find in any mainstream media. In fact, even our competitors that print the same kind of articles don't even cover the same detail that we have. And in fact, one of our um, what makes well what makes our paper special is that we do cite our sources. Yeah, you know, sources and documentation. And, That's uh, right. Many times we print uh, documentation verbatim. In place of of writing a story about it, we'll print the actual documentation so that. Uh, uh, you don't have to take anybody's word on it, and you don't have to go research it. I mean, you can read it right there. That's in right. That's right. One example was uh, Farrakhan speech. Uh, um, I had a lot of people calling, and they were very impressed that we happened to be the only newspaper that actually wrote his speech verbatim. In the whole world. Yeah. In the entire world, we're the only newspaper that printed that speech from beginning to end, verbatim, word for word, without one single word missing. That's right. And boy, you think that wasn't a job, and you can thank Michelle Moore for for doing the uh, the uh, transcribing That's right. from tape. Uh, <clears throat> what are some of the uh, the problems that you run into, Mike? Well, my first problem was learning how to use the program. Um, you see, when you do a layout, you just don't fill the pages according to the articles you have. It's like a, it's like a puzzle. You can only put so many articles for that page, and then you have to save the rest in other pages. And the reason why is you don't want to fill uh, two pages one, with one whole article is because presentation-wise, it's just not good, and it's going to lose interest with, with the readers. Yeah, and you can only have so many words in, 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 uh, in each article, and, uh, and there's 14 pages. So everything has to be squeezed into those 14 pages, and sometimes we have to do re-editing and right. all to, to make things fit. But the point I want to make, uh, you know, I had forgotten about it until you made that statement you had to learn the program yeah have you ever done a newspaper before i have never done a newspaper before this is totally new for me have you ever done a newsletter uh no i haven't 
<laughs> so you're producing one of the finest newspapers in the United States of America, and you've never done it before in your life. I never have. This is all brand new to me, and <laughs> I had to sit down and learn it. And at the same time, I'm meeting monthly deadlines, and you know, you got subscriptions, distributors, advertising, everything's happening. <laughs> yeah, and you're doing it all, you and, and Sharon. That's right. And and I do a little bit, but but mainly it's Mike. Uh, and what program do you use? At this moment, we're using the Aldis PageMaker version 6. And that is, uh, that's what? What kind of program is that? It's a um, desktop publishing program. Now, I have to ask him, folks, because I don't know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. I really don't. Right. It's not a word processing program. It's a desktop publishing program where, with a word processing, um, it's something where you would type letters, resumes, but with a desktop publishing program, you're actually doing newspaper layouts. And you could do, you could do a magazine? That's right. You could do brochures, you mm -hmm. could do, and you could do the, the best that people have ever seen if you want. And if you have a color uh, process, a color printer, yeah. You know, color printer, you can actually do uh, what they do in the finest magazines with that program. That's correct. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> I wish we had all the color. We, we, I only, <laughs> we can only do black and, uh, the, of course, the blue on the front page, which is our trademark. But mm -hmm. uh, um, how did you. Uh, learn how to lay out a newspaper like you have. Well, what I would do is I would look at um, major newspapers and I would just compare their layouts and I would just try to match something close to theirs. Like the front page, for example. If you look at the first few issues and compare with the current issue, you're going to notice that the format is different. It's, it's a little more exciting. You're going to have more articles in the front page compared to the previous issues. And it's because that's what the major newspapers do. They want to attract your attention and, and just show that... Um, each issue is, is packed with information. And you tried to uh, pick the best of the layouts that you've seen. That's right. I've had people call me and tell me that our paper is the best paper in this country. And they weren't talking about content. They were talking about the layout and the way that the paper is presented. And I was amazed because I'd never done this before and you'd never done this before. No. <laughs> Um, uh, the most I'd ever done is is do a, a you know off of a printer from a word processor mm -hmm. a little newsletter, right. which was like writing a letter is basically what I was doing, and uh, so uh, uh, you've certainly done a, a tremendous and, and very wonderful job. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, <laughs> you know, people out there don't understand where we get the information and the things that we put into the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And basically it comes from two organizations. Right. CAGI, the CAGI News Service. And we have, well, <laughs> I think about 800 members mm -hmm. of the CAGI News Service. And we have uh, the other, uh, I'll tell you, the, the most in-depth and the most well-researched and the most uh, uh, unknown information comes from the Intelligence Service. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many members in the intelligence service, nor can I tell you anything about them, and won't. Um, but you will see things in our newspaper that you won't see in any other newspaper in the world, simply because we have an intelligence operation that is gathering information that's not available to anyone else right. in the world. And we have the organization that, that's able to uh, get that information and get it to us and we're able to verify it and then print it. Uh, but we also accept articles. Uh, they don't have to be uh, professionally written, mm -hmm. but they have to be uh, what? Tell us. Well, it has to have, uh, first, a good content, and they have to definitely cite their sources because what I get is a lot of opinion articles, and, and that's fine, but we want something that also is good, hard facts news. That's right. <clears throat> But well, we do accept opinion yeah, articles, sure. and, and we do accept guest editorials, mm -hmm. and we run those all the time. Right. Um, but we do demand that um, anything that's stated as fact has to be sourced and are documented. Right. Both, both is better, but right. one or the other is what we, what we absolutely have to have. Right. That's something that we do demand because um, I get phone calls where people actually... They, um, they have questions about the article, and I just have to say, well, read the article and, and um, look for the sources that are cited. And, and we have to do this because we're going to get flack for it if you don't do it. That's what makes us a solid newspaper. That's right. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. 
We'll cite the sources in the article, and rather than go to the source and verify the information, people will call us. Right. <laughs> and now that's insane to me. I mean, we put the source in there so that they can verify it from the horse's mouth and, and, and go and do the research and, and discover whether the information is true or not. Um, and, and they call us, and all we can do is say, here's the article, here's the sources, we gave you everything that we know, uh -huh. go for it. Um, yeah, I had this one case. Um, this is regarding that uh, IRS BHS uh, criminal fraud headline article. Well, they were showing this to their friend, and, and that person called me up and asked me, is this true? <laughs> <laughs> and I also had people also do the same article. They're um, showing this to their friend, and their friend just wouldn't believe it, and they don't know how to present it to their friend. And I would say, well, just have them read the article because the sources are there. Just have them go through with it. And it was obvious to me that both people didn't even read the article <laughs> they just were asking me yeah well i think they read the article but they don't understand what a source is and they don't understand how to do research mm -hmm. and they don't understand that they can go to any federal depository library and get the sources if they're government documents right and look up and we give them the 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 uh, the publication mm -hmm. uh the chapter the uh, par you know the, the subsection right. the paragraph and sometimes right down to the very line uh, of where to look right and they'll still call us and say is this you know is this true <laughs> the reason we do that folks is so that you can go check it and verify it for yourself right and see if it's true or not mm -hmm. now there's some uh, articles that we do where we can't cite sources uh, uh, we can document things but we can't cite sources simply because the sources uh, are afraid or they, um, or they would be subject to ridicules, uh, such as the last headline article we ran on the uh, cattle mutilations. This is something that's been occurring since about 1964 mm -hmm. in this country. And uh, um, it has unfortunately been connected with flying saucers and UFOs and, and uh, the ufologist uh, network. And so people do not like to have their names connected with it. So all you can cite is uh, where it happened, and uh, and uh, and then people have to go and check the local newspapers yeah. and publications and look up the sources for themselves. Uh, golly, what can we? Uh... Oh, letters. Um, we've been getting letters to the editors, and uh, you know we appreciate each one. Um, let me see. <coughs> How do they go about sending a letter to the newspaper well, or to the editor or to you? Um, what you have to do is just ref well go to page two, and what you're going to see is uh, <coughs> in a shaded box, you're going to see instructions of how to write to us, and you just merely follow those instructions, and you send it to our address. And if you've been uh, reading the newspaper, folks, and you've been paying attention to the letters, letters to the editor column, uh, you know that we print all the letters. <laughs> And we try to print, uh, uh, if we get bad letters, we try to print them, make sure that they get in there first. Right. We try to be fair. We show the good and the bad. We don't want to show people that we're, uh, we're only presenting the, uh, the good opinions. <laughs> I mean, that would be biased. We also want to show that there are people out there that, for example, they get offended with uh, some of the symbols that we use, like um, Nudas Veritas on the front page and our sheeple graphic. <laughs> hey, why don't you talk about that? What is... Why, why do we have this nude lady as the I in Veritas? Veritas is spelled V-E-R-I-T-A-S, and the I is, uh, is a tall uh, letter I, which within that letter has a nude woman. Um, you Believe me, folks, it's presented in the best of taste. There is nothing there that is obscene or uh, could be considered to be uh, rude or insulting. Um, and the uh, the top of the torso is covered by the woman's hair, mm -hmm. and in the uh, in the pelvic area there is absolutely nothing there. Period. Uh, it is no different than a doll that your daughter plays with every single day. Right. And um, I know that these people who call and complain about it have daughters who have dolls who look just exactly like this. Mm -hmm. And, and they're hypocrites, right? That's what they are. But tell us what what this is for, what it means, and why we put it there. Okay. Well, um, that lady represents the universal universal symbol for truth. She's the naked truth, and that's all that is. It's not. 
it's not pornographic, it's just a symbol. Yeah. And you've all heard me, ladies and gentlemen, tell you that if you want to know what what's really happened to this country, go in your bathroom and look in the mirror. Right. The truth will be staring you in the face. And and this is what she's doing. Mm -hmm. She is a naked woman looking in a mirror that she's holding in her hand and there she sees the truth about herself. And uh, that's that's what it really means. Right. She's just a symbol. I mean, if you look through our newspaper, we have a lot of information there. Don't brush our newspaper just based on that symbol. I mean, look. <laughs> um, the sheeple cartoon represents the, the sleeping American people who really don't know uh, what's going on. And with our with the captions that we put there every month, it's to somehow uh, uh, get them excited. Whether they're uh, angry, it's just to get them excited and let them know that you know this is the, this is not what they they should be. Right. It's a, it's a wake up call. Right. It's a hey. This is this is where you're at. And, <laughs> and if you don't like that, if it insults you, if it makes you angry, then you need to do something to change that. Right. Because uh, to tell you the truth, that cartoon is never coming out of this newspaper until Americans are awake and there are no more sheeple to, to write about. And if you talk to an intelligent person who understands what's going on with this country and you refer to that graphic, they'll just laugh and they'll say, well, it doesn't apply to me. It doesn't even offend me whatsoever. I understand the purpose of that graphic. Right. You know, throughout my life, uh -huh. uh, I, I found it very, <laughs> very amusing that uh, if you if you walk down the street and uh, you stand in front of a bank and you all of a sudden scream, Stop! Stop! Bank robber! Stop! Mm -hmm. Catch that man! I find it extremely amusing that anyone would take offense to that or come up and say, Why are you calling me a bank robber? Uh -huh. <laughs> because, you see, if they're not a bank robber, why would it concern them? That's why right. would it make them angry? That's right. It's like when I, when I talk about the sheeple on the radio, sometimes I get letters from people, ladies and gentlemen, that rave about the fact that I called them personally mm -hmm. a sheeple. Mm -hmm. When in truth, I didn't even know that they existed until I got their letter. I wasn't talking to them, don't know anything about them, but they recognized in their own mind and in their own heart that they were a sheeple, that I was talking about them. And they were insulted because they didn't want to hear it. <laughs> and that's the truth. You see, if I'm talking about sheeple, or if we're talking about uh, a cartoon in the newspaper that represents the sheeple of America, right. it's not going to insult you unless it is hitting you in the breadbasket, right. unless it applies directly to you. Right. Uh, I can be walking down the street and somebody could say, Hey, blankety, blankety, blankety. I don't even turn around because I know they're not talking about me because I'm not blankety, blankety, blankety. That's right. Now, let's, uh, oh, me. We need to do something here. Okay. We've been yapping on and uh, yapping on and uh, missed a break. So let me... Uh, let me do that right now. So hold on, folks. We're going to do a little break. Mike works so hard that sometimes, especially when we're close to deadline, he actually sleeps at the office. And uh, sometimes this is what we this is what we see at Mike. Oops, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Maybe I've got it all bunched up here. I don't even know where I'm at. Is this it? Let me see. Nope, that's not it either. That's not it either. <laughs> well, I think I messed up the uh, music here completely. Yes, I did. So, we won't do that at all. What we'll do... Oh, I know why I did it. <laughs> I know exactly why. Folks, uh, this is why. I had the music all set out and, and all queued up to play. And then uh, Sharon, Mike's wife, came to me and asked me to play uh, this dedication just for Mike because the show is for him and he is the our honored guest and uh, uh, she loves him very much. Mike doesn't know anything about this.
That's what they were doing when I caught them up on the on the rim tonight. <laughs> but okay, folks, they're married. <laughs> Why don't uh, uh, we talk about the uh, the distributorships? Um, We've got a good plan for people to make money selling our paper. Go ahead. That's right. With a distributorship, you have two choices: either you can um, actually make money out of this, or distribute uh, copies for free to friends, relatives, and any other loved ones. Or cost if you want, but uh, this paper sells, folks. When people see what's in this paper, uh, it sells. And um, if you're looking for a way to make a second income, uh, this is one of the best ways that you could ever have. You can distribute it to bookstores and magazine racks or, or go to uh, conventions and trade shows and uh, uh, all kinds of things, and and sell this newspaper and uh, make a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent piece of uh, pocket change. And not pocket change; you could actually make a living if you did it full size. Why don't you tell uh, tell our listeners about how they can become distributors and what the uh, price breaks are and what they have to do and uh, all that stuff. Okay, to be a distributor, you just send a check or money order and have that payable to image 1216. You send it to our address, which is P.O. Box 3390. That's St. John's, Arizona, 85936. I would recommend that you send it before the end of the month, before we actually go to press, so that I can actually have an account to take to the press. Um, and now let me give you the price breakdown. The minimum quantity would be a 25 quantity package which is $28 and that includes shipping and handling. The next package is for 50 quantities that's for 49 and that also includes shipping. Well actually all these prices include shipping and handling. Again for 50 quantity it's $49. For 100 it's 92. For 500 it's 385. If you uh, have any other um, if you have a quantity larger than, the, the, larger than that, you can give me a call, and that's at 520-337-2878. 
Yeah, if you have larger, if you want to purchase larger quantities to resell, then then uh, Mike will give you a, a better price break. But what's the uh, what's the price of the paper? What's the retail price? The retail price per issue is two dollars. And so uh, you're making a hundred percent on your money, aren't you? That's right. In fact, you're making more than a hundred percent if you sell all your papers. That's correct. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, let me give you an example with a 25 quantity package where you would spend $28 and the profit per package would be uh, $27.50. And that's for the lowest quantity. That's right. That's for the lowest. So you're not quantity. making 100% on the lowest quantities, but you are on all the rest. That's right. It actually goes over 100% at the 50 price break. That's where, correct. Where it costs you $49. Mm -hmm. And you're going to resell them for two. You can resell them for less than that uh, if you want to, but. Uh, we don't recommend it because there's no reason that you have to. That's right. <laughs> How many distributors do we have right now um, across the country? Across the country, I, I don't, I wouldn't know right now. I can you take a guess. Um, probably at least twenty. Twenty distributors across mm -hmm. the country, and uh, they're taking quite a bit of newspapers. That's right. And and selling them. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how do people subscribe? For people to, to subscribe, again, you uh, send a check or money order. Um, it's for $35, and that's for 24 issues. Uh, you send it to P.O. Box 3390, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. And uh, your subscriptions will start with the next issue, which would be issue number 12. And they make check or money order payable to? Oh, it's payable to image 1216. Image 1216. Mm -hmm. And the address is Veritas, P.O. Box 3390, St. John's, Arizona, 85936. Now, when we say 24 issues, folks, we're putting out an issue once a month right now. If we ever get to the point where we can afford to hire a, a staff of people, we'll try to come out uh, sooner than that and uh, even sooner than that on down the line but right now it's once a month because basically we've got two people uh, creating and producing a paper that it that it takes a hundred people to produce uh, uh, every other paper mm -hmm. <laughs> in this country that even remotely comes close to uh, two hours I'm, I'm exaggerating on a hundred but I would say it would take at least 25 people to produce a paper of our quality um, and uh, with the information that we have, it might even take a hundred people of any other uh, paper. Mm -hmm. um, and when we are talking about 24 issues, that's that's what we're talking about. But it's it doesn't mean once a month, folks. It means when the issue goes to press and is sent out. So right now, everybody's getting a paper once a month. You might get it. Uh, you you might in one month get two papers. You might uh, get one paper in two months. That's never happened, and I don't anticipate that it will ever happen. But if uh, if Michael got real sick, it might happen. Right. So I've got to tell you that 24 issues means 24 issues. It does not mean 24 months or 24 weeks or 24 years or anything like that. And. Uh, and we've been sticking uh, real close to our deadline and uh, and have been getting the, the papers out on time. Right. And, uh, folks, this is way beyond anything that I ever thought we were going to be able to do. In the first place, I never dreamed that we would be able to produce the quality that we're producing or a full-size newspaper. I always uh, thought when we started that it was going to be something like a tabloid side, tabloid size. And... Uh, but I wanted to do a full-size newspaper, and we sat down and talked about it, and it went happen. And uh, we stuck with a full-size newspaper. By the way, um, with the material we have, and considering our competitors, they don't they do not go with a full-size newspaper. They stick to the tabloid type. Yeah, that's right. So we're breaking new ground with a full-size newspaper. We sure are. Yeah. And and we're also experimenting with a lot of cost-cutting measures and all right. kinds of other things right. because, uh, uh, to tell you quite frankly. Uh, we barely made it for a while, and we were in the hole, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, our, our subscribers came to the rescue by paying a steep initial uh, charter subscription price, and then later, uh, when we came out of the red, uh, we were able to lower the subscription price, but I, if it had not been for those charter subscribers willing to pay $55 for 24 issues, the paper would never have gotten off the ground. That's right. At the beginning, we just had steep, steep costs. Yeah, and I have to, uh, I have to thank all of you who were charter subscribers for being willing to take a chance on Veritas. And uh, I know that all of you were 
richly rewarded. And uh, you can also be rewarded in the fact that if, if it had not been for you, uh, it would not have survived. That's right. Uh, we also do something else that nobody else does. Oh, <laughs> we uh, hand deliver um, issues to representatives and major um, news and uh, print bureaus in Washington, D.C. Yeah, every, every uh, member of the House of Representatives, every member of the Senate, every member of the President's Cabinet, the vice president and the president received copies of our newspaper and uh, from what i understand the special messenger uh, tells us that the president has actually requested and gets three copies every issue <laughs> and the vice president also oh, three okay. copies every single issue so um they want to know what we're doing i guess and uh, we're we're telling them that's right and we're providing it to them whether they like it or not <laughs> that's right uh, a few have called and asked to be taken off our list and we tell them no you are public servants and uh we're going to deliver this paper to you whether you want it or not so that's right they do get it i don't know where it goes when they get it but <laughs> <laughs> that's a different story <laughs> that's a different story but we can assure you that they do get the paper every single one of them and if you call your representative or your senator and ask them about it and they say they don't get the paper, uh, we can prove that it is delivered to their office. So if, it, if they're not actually seeing it, that means one of their staff members is keeping it from them and you need to, uh, you need to advise them to tell their staff to make sure that they get to see this, this paper. But whether the senator or representative or cabinet member actually sees the paper or not, the people around those people uh, see it and read it and um, we know that it, it's making an impact in Washington, D.C., because we have actually caused things to happen. After the BATF IRS criminal fraud article mm -hmm. uh, appeared, uh, it caused such an upheaval and such a stir in Washington, D.C., that the uh, IRS actually immediately stopped performing random audits on American citizens uh, across this country and uh, began an investigation into their own historian from whom we got a lot of the information that was published uh, in the article. And uh, uh, what came out, uh, because they began to investigate their own historian, their own historian went to the press and, uh, and, and spilled the beans mm -hmm. on, on what they're doing and how they're hiding the truth of their origin and their records from the public and how they've been disobeying the law by not filing uh, their historical records or revealing their historical records uh, and, and uh, giving them to the national to the director of the national archives so that there could be a permanent record on file and the director of the national archives has now ordered the irs to conform to the law and deliver up their historical records and <laughs> and their uh, records uh, each year to the national archives so that there can be a permanent record so folks you know we're just people just like you i'm no different than any of you mike is no different than any of you we're just normal ordinary people who care so if you think that you can't make a difference you're wrong tell them mike <laughs> you can make a difference that's absolutely true <laughs> you can make a big difference all you have to do is decide how you how you're going to do it and do it uh and and uh, you don't have to be an expert i mean we didn't know how to produce a paper that's right we started from scratch and it, it took a lot of hard work but we're actually getting the hang of it <laughs> yeah and how many times have you had to sleep in the office wow <laughs> Um, We've all slept in the office at, at different times, but Mike, I think, has slept there more than... You shouldn't even say sleep. Actually, I've lost sleep. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I mean, if you were going to sleep in the office, there wouldn't be any reason for being there, would you? <laughs> That's right. I mean, there were times where I didn't even sleep, and I would just, uh, you know, work, work all night through. And come 9 o'clock, we're ready to go to Gallup and go to press. Yeah. we got a little time. You want to take some calls? Okay. Like if, if any of you want to talk to Mike and uh, ask him anything about the newspaper or, or uh, whatever you want to do, uh, I'm going to open the phones right now, and we'll go the rest of the hour on the phones uh, with Mike. It's 520-333-4578. So uh, the phones are open. 520-333-4578 for all of you who may be new listeners or never wrote it down. Good evening. You're on the air. My name is Ray from New York City. Hello, Ray. And we love you up here. 
Uh, just want to keep it short because there isn't too much time. I didn't hear if the uh, if the House bill passed or not. Are you talking about the anti-terrorist bill? Correct. I tell you quite frankly, I've been busy all day and I don't know. Okay, well, I don't want to take up any much more of your time, but I just want to say keep up the good work. God bless. Godspeed. Thank you. 520-333-4578 is the number. If you have any comments or questions you want to direct toward Mike, good evening. You're on the air. Hi, Bill. Hi, Mike. Hello. Hello. Uh, this is Dave in Albuquerque. Uh, I just had a question about the, the publishing software you use. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what, which one do you use? It's Aldous Page Maker version 6. Uh, okay, so that's the Windows 95 version? Um, yes. Yeah, are you using Windows 95? Yes. And do you, do you like using that? The Page Maker, I mean? Um, yes, I, I'm comfortable using it. Right. Okay, well, that's uh, kind of what I wanted to know. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye. Thank I, you. I can tell you that, uh, from my experience, it's not easy to learn. It takes time and hard work. And uh, Mike has devoted all that time and hard work, and he's our expert. <laughs> Good evening. You're on the air. Thank you very much. This is Daniel from uh, Houston. Uh, the question I have is, is there a possibility of reprinting the article about the um, Soviet military man who was present at the demolition of one of our um, uh, SAC uh, uh, silos? Is that a, a candidate type of uh, article for the newspaper? Um, I think that's happened uh, a while ago. And uh, I don't know, did, was that in the newspaper? Was that in our newspaper? Uh, I heard no. it, it on, on your presence. No, we, we have, uh, we've done a lot of uh, broadcasts about the disarmament uh, agency, about uh, State Department Publication 7277 and the fact that there are Russian um, officers and representatives of the Russian government here to supervise the disarmament of the United States of America. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, you know... Uh, uh, what you said is all correct. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the uh, verbal description of the article, and you had read it on one of your programs, yes. uh, was from the personal interest of uh, 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 a man who is not a national of our country um, talking about uh, what he's accomplished. And it, re it really had impact the night I heard you read that article. But anyway, thank you very much. You're welcome. We try to put what we consider to be the most important uh, uh, information and articles in each issue of Veritas. And sometimes it's a hard choice, folks, because you have no idea, no conception of the amount of paper and uh, information that flows into us uh, every month. It is absolutely incredible. 520-333-4578 is the number if you want to call in and talk to Mike um, for the rest of uh, the hour. Good evening. You're on the air. Turn off your radio. Yes. Yes, I'm enjoying your program very much, uh, and I think it's, uh, you do an excellent job every night. I'm calling you from Miami, Florida. And... Uh, we have very serious problems in the state of Florida with our legal system. We have uh, close to maybe uh, 800 lawyers now that have joined together and toward the uh, Ballard Bar, Bar Association. Uh, it is so horrible down here in Miami that, I mean, it's, uh, people just don't believe in the system. The, uh, a little while back, the U.S. attorney came in and they nailed five judges for taking close to $300,000 worth of kickbacks from uh, undercover FBI agents. Uh, people just don't believe in the system. I mean, uh, it, it's sad that I guess we have the best system that, uh, of justice that money can buy, and there's an awful lot of judges being bought these days. Uh, what's your question for Mike? Well, I just feel I wanted to see if you had some con con consent of opinion. We strongly feel here in the state of Florida and probably other cases that the lawyers in this country have got a stranglehold on every single American citizen out there today, and that the average person is one frivolous lawsuit away from bankruptcy. Do you care to uh, make a comment on that? Well, the reason why the attorneys have such have such a stranglehold is because um, a lot of Americans are pretty ignorant with the law. They, it's just something that they don't want to deal with, and that's why they hire an attorney. And the attorney will just, you know, mention all this. Uh, the attorney rigs it so that he'll milk you of all your money, uh, and then when you don't have any more money, uh, he'll <laughs> he'll let you. Uh, uh, hang out there on a limb and then you might uh, uh, win a little bit back or you might go to jail or you might end up with nothing but uh, uh, I guarantee you 
that the wealth of everybody that walks into court is transferred into the hands of attorneys eventually, and, and uh, some of it goes into the pockets of judges. Mm -hmm. But we feel, we have big, there are four big trucks running up and down the highways in Florida here, big signs in the back of the trucks that says, Restore the Constitution. Don't vote for lawyers. In other words, don't give these people a chance to destroy us any more than they already have. Yeah. So I thank you for your program. Thank you for calling. Okay, thank you. 520-333-4578 is the number. And uh, we've got time, I think, for one more call. Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, good evening, Charlie from New Jersey. Uh, I have a question. You say you uh, print the paper uh, using your uh, all this uh, software. Uh -huh. How do you get from... Uh, the computer to what do you bring to the printer? Good question. Well, what we do is we do a manual paste up on the layout paper, and um, we deliver those layout sheets to the printer, and what they'll do is they'll just run copies of that layout sheet. What comes out of your printer? Uh, standard 9 by uh, what will come or, or is it oversized, full-size full, full size paper? What will come out is an 8.5 by 11 tile. And we just manually paste those tiles together, and we come up with a layout sheet. And it's not easy. I mean, the tiles don't always fit That's together. Right. <laughs> there, there's a lot of work that goes into that. We had to build a special table with lights under it, and we have to use a special paper that's extremely white and bright, mm -hmm. um, uh, because when it goes to the uh, to the printer, uh, they have to uh, photograph the layout and make the plates, and then run the presses, and the paper comes off the presses. Uh, uh, some of them come off half fold and some come off quarter fold. That's right. I see. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, it is a long, drawn out uh, process. It's an awful lot of work, uh, time consuming, meticulous. Uh, and then there's a long, long drive uh, to the printer with the layouts, and then we have to stay there all day. And uh, uh, sometimes Annie and I have done it. And, uh, most of the times Mike and Sharon have done it. And then. Uh, uh, sometime in the late afternoon, uh, it rolls off the presses and you load up the truck and and then there's the long drive back and and then you have to label every uh, paper and uh, then we have to sort it into zip codes and then it has to go to the post office and we have to pack special boxes for the distributors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> you know, now you know why I get extremely angry when somebody tells me that they're only one person and there's nothing that they can do. Right. Because we're only... This newspaper is handled by a staff of four people. Yeah. And not only that, but this broadcast, the Intelligence Service, mm -hmm. the Citizens Agency for Joint Intelligence, and we do a lot of other things that most of you don't even know about. That's it, folks. Thank you, Mike, for being the guest tonight. And thank, thank you for all the wonderful work that you've done. And without you, there wouldn't be a newspaper. Thank you very much. Good night, folks. Good night. And God bless you all. And this is what we think the world should be. And by the way, I really like old Louis Armstrong anyway. Is that him? That's not him. Well, I got screwed up again. See, that request just got me all off. Here we go. Good night.